Did you say cheese? Yeah. All right guys, hello and welcome back to our channel. So I'm sure you're probably wondering why I have not kept with the promise of a weekly upload. Um, <clears throat> long story short, I ended up getting influenza A and then all the kids got it too. So I've been down for the past few weeks. So a few days after I last updated you guys, I started feeling, you know, just kind of off. I mean, I went to the store that day and everything was fine, but that night when we got home, I started unloading groceries and I went outside without a coat and it was pretty cold out. So, I, I, you know, I wasn't even thinking anything of it really. I just went out, got our stuff, came back in, and then it felt like I had pleurisy. So I didn't think anything of it. And then within an hour, I was having a hard time breathing. My chest was burning, felt like it was on fire, my throat hurt. Um, so yeah, and then that later on that night, about three o'clock in the morning, uh, Willow got a really high fever. So I knew it wasn't just me. Um, and then Oliver had felt kind of crappy all day too. But I didn't think anything of it because, you know, he's going through a growth spurt and his muscles hurt and, you know, just normal kid stuff getting up, getting bigger and, you know, getting older and stuff. So I was sick for, extremely sick for like four days. And then I still had a cough up until this point. Like I'm better. I feel fine when I wake up in the mornings, but the cough, the drainage, it's still there. Luckily, the kids have all recovered nicely. Um, David was the luckiest one of all, though, and did not get sick at all. So we camped out in this bedroom for a good week. No, it was five days we stayed in here. And we just kind of tried to keep all of our bodies quarantined to one room so we didn't spread it throughout the house. And Lysol was my definitely my best friend during those trying times <laughs> guys make sure you wash your hands when you go out i mean wash your hands use a squirt of sanitizer do something do not be selfish and not wash your hands after before and after everything and use a squirt of hand sanitizer here and there i know hand sanitizer is not as effective as washing your hands but it's still better than doing absolutely nothing and which proves another valid point never kiss anyone else's baby because if the baby was already here and we got that she would have been in critical condition if not worse so yeah that's a little recap of our past two and a half to three weeks influenza a the worst you can get and david's very lucky that he didn't get it because he has bell's palsy well not obviously right now but um, he did have a flare up once before back in 2015. We thought he was having a stroke. Come to find out it was just Bell's palsy, which still is not any less serious. You know, you could have permanent paralysis of one or both sides of your face. And anything that has to do with like a herpes virus, like a cold sore or, you know, the flu, anything of that nature that can lay in your spinal fluid and it reacts when you get sick it could make the bells flare up again and the doctor said if he does get it from an illness that he will more than likely not recover as well as he did five years ago now to get to the title of this video yes we are being induced and no it was not on my birth plan which I'm gonna discuss with you guys as well however the doctor wants to induce me at 39 weeks if I do not go into labor before then, which I was against being induced because of what happened with Willow. She was in induction as well and everything just went all bad, but I think that was part, part the doctor because he kept pumping my Pitocin up, up and up and up and up, and I mean, I was already contracting, so there really was no need in bringing it on stronger, stronger, stronger. And by the time I was ready to push with her, my placenta was already ripped to shreds from the intense contracting. And TMI warning, he had to go elbow deep inside of me after I had her 
and literally pull out the pieces of placenta that was still attached inside of my uterus. And then he made a fist while he was still in my uterus and pushed the outside of my belly like to compress it to try and stop the bleeding inside of my uterus. And they said I was a 20 to 30 milliliter blood loss away from needing transfusion. And it just, they put me out. I didn't know what was going on. I can't hardly remember what happened that evening. I do know that our photographer that was there, she actually stepped in and helped David take care of Willow while they were working on me. And it was just, it was a traumatic experience. So that's why I was totally against it at first. But I am open to it again after speaking with my new doctor. So that leaves us with 33 days until we're induced. And I'm really hoping that I go into labor on my own. However, if I don't, then March 22nd will be our induction day. I'm not looking forward to the contractions with induction because like I said, they, they tend to come on fast and a little bit more painful. But that all go, coincides with my birth plan. Um, I'm still gonna try to go totally natural this time because with every child up until this point, the epidural has had to been redone twice at least per child and I think it my scoliosis has something to do with it because of my degree of my curve and my spine and my hips one sits you know a little bit higher than the other so they can't get me perfectly straight to get the needle in the right position um, they left a permanent numb spot in my right shoulder that sometimes gets like like a zinger they call it a zinger you know when they put the needle in and the pain shoots down your leg it feels like that sometimes on my shoulder which you know is manageable but <clears throat> induction is 33 days away so make sure you guys subscribe and hang out for that because that should be interesting if i don't go into labor before then i went into labor naturally with oliver and aggie at 32 or no not 32 weeks i'm sorry 38 weeks and two days with both of them so we'll try to get labor going on its own before then, but if not, then you know a for sure day. Um, another thing, prodromal, prodromal labor, I think that's how you call it. It's been bad. Every night around two o'clock until five, 5.30, I get contractions and they're not Braxton Hicks because Braxton Hicks usually aren't painful but these they rock my world let me tell you I'm not a sissy when it comes to pain but these I have to breathe through and I can't move but they don't continue and they don't increase in intensity you know it's just a thing that happens every night so the doctor said it's prodromal labor Anyway, so the last time I seen my doctor was last week at 33 weeks and he measured my belly, he did an ultrasound, he does an ultrasound every time I go to see him. There's a little portable ultrasound machine in each um, patient room. So he just checks and makes sure that the baby's still head down, you know, there's a good heartbeat and there's good fetal tones and you know, all that good stuff. So the last time I went was last week. I was 33 and four days, I believe. And he said that the placenta is deteriorating just a teeny bit quicker than he would like. Nothing major, but it's more mature, like I would be 36 weeks old. Hence the reason why he would like to induce at 39 if I make it that far. It's not a threat to the baby yet. Everything's fine so far. He just does not want me to go to 40 weeks because it would be like the placenta is inching more towards, you know, 42 and a half to 43 weeks. And that's, you know, 42 is usually the limit on what you can go being pregnant before it starts to seriously deteriorate, you know, and the baby will end up suffering for that. So that's, that's mainly the reason why I'm totally okay with being induced this time if we don't go into labor first. So, while I'm here, I wanted to discuss with you guys my birth plan. Now, I had it written down, but I've gone over it so many times, I pretty much know what we do and don't want, which obviously I've had to exclude. Avoiding induction is the number one thing, which, like I said, we're cool with. 
So my birth plan obviously had to be changed around some first things first. We're open to induction now, just given the circumstances. Plus, it's more convenient for David's work because he's not been there a full year yet, so therefore he does not qualify for FMLA. Which, his HR lady's real super cool. She offered to give him a week off uh, when we go in, so he's going to take advantage of that. By the way, maternity and paternity leave in the U.S. sucks. It's usually unpaid. They don't give you much time, but we're grateful for a week, so he's definitely going to take that. Um, and hey, by the way, if you guys decide to be induced, you know, just for convenience sake, you know, or your husband or wife or partner's going out of town and you want to be induced beforehand and you're like at that right gestational point and the doctor's okay with it, don't let anyone shame you into thinking that it's not okay. I mean, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Uh, second bullet point on my birth plan was no epidural which I am gonna try to avoid, like I said earlier, as long as possible because they just can't seem to get it right. I am open to, however, intermediate relief, you know, through my IV. Totally cool with that. I'm cool with having an IV. You know, I'm pretty chill when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'm not like, no IV, no monitoring, no cervical checks, no this, no that. Like. Come on, ladies. We are bringing a baby into this world. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And cervical checks, there's a lot of flack about that too. Like, some women just don't want a check, and that's okay, but I wanna know that I'm progressing. I wanna know that I'm doing well. My request for monitoring, I would like to have the wireless monitoring so I can get up, move around, you know, walk, help progress everything because I've never done that before and I would like to. Thanks. Want a cupcake? Anyways, I would like to be able to move around, sit on a ball, you know, walk the halls with David, all that good stuff. I would like to delay the cord clamping as long as we possibly can. I would like to ideally wait until after the placenta has been delivered, but that probably won't happen. So I'm cool with just waiting an extra three to four minutes before we deliver the placenta and then clamp it. You know, every second after she's born and leaving that cord unclamped. Ooh! You guys didn't see that. Anyways, yeah, every second that you go not clamping that cord is very, very beneficial to the baby. Other than that, I mean, we're not going to have any visitors besides my immediate family and the kids. Oh, and I want to delay her first bath for 24 hours just because the vernix that covers the baby if she's born with any, which the only kid of ours that was born with a bunch was Willow. Um, if she has any at all, I like to keep that on their skin for the first 24 hours. You know, it, it's beneficial with eczema, psoriasis. Um, it just helps keep them moisturized and their skin smooth and hydrated. So I feel that's a really good option. So, that's pretty much it for this video. I will leave you guys with a bump shot. Um, I'm down to 216 pounds. I started this journey at 258, I believe it was. I'll have to go back and look. But yeah, I've lost a substantial amount of weight. And the doctor's not really concerned but they're just monitoring the baby to make sure she's gained weight, which he said last week at 33 and one, no, I'm sorry, 33 and four, she was five pounds and a few ounces. So that's in the 50th percentile, that's, you know, average, that's fine. Um, he also scanned my cervix on ultrasound and seen that it was closed and high. I'm not effaced or dilated at all, so. 
crazy, kid. Ow! <laughs> Ow! This is what happens when I try. Ow! I'm trying to make a video for you guys. Ow! Stop! Okay, guys, I'll wrap it up here. Oh, I forgot. There was another question that was asked by a fan on Instagram, and she wanted to know why. This one's being such a butthole. <laughs> Anyways, she wanted to know why we kept this pregnancy so long from the kids. We didn't tell them until I was 26 weeks along. That was at Christmas time. Uh, the main reason to be short and sweet about it is we did not want to suffer another loss and then know about it so early on. So we wanted to make sure that we was at at least viability and everything was fine and everything checked out before we announced just to you know because i i really couldn't imagine putting the kids through that again because they were they were a wreck for quite some time after we lost morgan so i mean that's pretty much it there was no other reason we just wanted to make sure that everything was okay before we let them know so you know to save them the heartache all right, so next video I'm gonna put up is what I'm packing in my hospital bag. Like I said, we have 33 days left and time is clicking quicker than I would like it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our bag packed. I'm gonna, well, I may have David pack his own, but I'm gonna get his stuff laid out and ready. Um, <clears throat> now I will tell you, this is our fifth. This is nothing new to us. We've done this four times before, and I'm going to give you guys just the bare essentials, the necessities that you need to take with you to the hospital, and everything else is usually supplied to you. Whatever I take is just my choice um, as far as convenience or clothing, you know, stuff like that. So I'll go into detail with you guys about that in the next video, which I will try to put up this weekend. It's Monday today, so I'll have, try to have it up by Saturday or Sunday. And then after that, I'll do a baby haul on some of the gear we've gotten already. Um, lots of exciting stuff coming. It's getting down to the wire. I'm nervous. I usually don't get nervous, but I am this time. Just because I know it's going to be a really emotional day for me and David. And Leaving the kids, of course, to go in and have the baby and keeping her name a secret from you guys, which I feel bad, but at the same time I don't because nobody likes it but me, Dave, and the kids, and I'm just thankful we've made it to this point, and I'm thankful that she's healthy and growing the way she should be, and we did not suffer a miscarriage this time, and I'm just nervous and I hope you guys are along with us because making these videos are really an outlet for me to try and like keep my head on straight and vent and at the same time encourage you guys and give you guys my experience because if you don't know me by now I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to keep it 100% real with you guys. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you all the bump and we will wrap this up. All right, before I show you guys the bump, I wanted to let you know today's 34 weeks and one day, which I'm sure I've said like 20 times in this video already, but some of my cravings, the biggest one is an Outback Bloomin' Onion. I just, the sauce, mm, deep fried, oh my God and calamari, but I can't find any decent calamari in this area and I don't want to go to Olive Garden or Red Lobster or anything like that, so yeah. I feel good though. Heartburn is through the roof, especially at night. It keeps me up. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm feeling good, so. size 34 week bump. <laughs> the 
from here. <laughs> All right, guys. I will be back with you in a few days with packing our hospital bag. Say bye. Hi. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.